Hello, good morning to everyone in North and South America. Good afternoon and evening to everybody on the other side of the world. Uh, my name is Joseph Merrill, and uh, I was a U.S. Vice Consul. Uh, I served in the State Department for a number of years, and for a part of my time, uh, I managed a visa team. And we issued a lot of visas. And uh, I've seen and, and conducted a very large number of student visa interviews, and have seen a lot of students. I've seen students that have interviewed really well and some students that interviewed really poorly. And I'm hoping today that I can give you some practical advice to help you with your student visa interview. So at this point, uh, just to, to review really quickly, we're going we're gonna to go over some tips uh, for your visa interview rules and uh, try to help you out so that uh, you have the best chance of success for your visa. The, the, after we're done going over a few of these kind of simple things that you need to know for your, for your visa interview, uh, then we're going to leave some time open at the end uh, for questions. Uh, this presentation is being recorded, so uh, it will be available and will be sent out <clears throat> as a link to everyone who signed up. So even if you weren't able to make it, uh, if you can go and just attend uh, by you know, watching the video later, that's totally fine. So let's get started. Uh, you'll see up on your screen, we have a little handout here. Uh, it just says the three simple uh, US visa rules. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for everybody to see. Uh, you're going to, you, you are able to download this document. So if you are uh, watching remotely or if you're looking at the video and you're downloading it later, uh, you can go in and get this information. Uh, directly out of the webinar so that you can have this document. I suggest you take the time to print out a copy of it and look at it if you're going for your student visa interview. So, you know, I, I, I think that while I was doing student visa interviews, th there, there are a few people who really stand out, so, uh, folks that I interviewed at different times who either uh, did very well in the interviews or did so poorly in the interviews that I remember them. You know, it's difficult to remember a lot of the people who just did what they were supposed to and came on time. And so you'll often hear me discuss cases where things went really wrong or really well because those are the ones I remember the best. But uh, overall, going and getting your visa at the U.S. Embassy, I know it's very stressful. It's something that when you get to the embassy, you're very nervous. You've probably prepared for a year, sometimes more, uh, just for that moment. And it kind of feels like your entire fate is in the hand of one person at the other side of a window. So let me give you some advice on how to work with that person and help you to understand how that person is thinking. Uh, U.S. vice consuls and people who work in the U.S. consulate uh, doing student visa interviews, they're all bound by certain laws. And they're trained to look for and discern uh, if someone is a bona fide student who is going to the United States to perform their studies and at the end of their studies return back to the country that they came from. A U.S. student visa is a non-immigrant visa. What that means is persons who use a student visa to go to the United States must do so with the intention to return to their home country. U.S. student visas cannot be used for immigration. Now, if you go to the United States and while studying there, your plans change, say you marry an American or you get hired by a U.S. company and they give you an immigrant visa or something like that, you get an H-1B, uh, that's different because you did not go with the intention of trying to immigrate. It just organically happened after you got to the United States. People understand that that's going to happen. but you cannot receive a student visa if you intend to immigrate. So that's one of the first things you have to understand is if it is your intention to immigrate to the United States, then this isn't the right visa for you. The consular officer by law has to assume that you want to immigrate to the United States. That is called Section 214B of the Immigration and Nationality Act. The number one reason students get refused for a visa is because of Section 214B. So when you go in and you apply for your visa interview, just remember that the consular officer believes that you are trying to immigrate to the United States. 
because that's illegal to do on a student visa and he will refuse you. You have to prove to that consular officer otherwise and you probably have about one minute or less to do it. They interview people all day long and so you really have a very short window of time to demonstrate that you're a student. The only way you can overcome the presumption that you are an immigrant is by providing a compelling case showing that you have social, cultural, educational, and commercial ties that will compel you to come back to your home country. And so let's talk a little bit about how we can do this. So look at these are the three simple rules I've given for having a successful visa interview. Let's take a look. The first one is really simple. Be honest. A lot of times students feel like they have to lie to the consular officer. One of the interviewing techniques that works really well is to ask people a question that you already know the answer to and see if the person's telling you the truth. And a lot of times that's just on the DS-160. So the form you fill out when you go in for your interview, make sure you fill it out completely and accurately. One of the most common mistakes is that a student will not use their actual real address and phone number when they fill out the form. Instead, on the DS-160, they will put in the, uh, the address or the phone number of the agent that's helping them. If you do that, then you're not answering that form accurately. And it's an easy way to get refused. And you can get refused really quickly. The consular officer is going to open up your application and be alerted that there are a large number of people with the same address. Because they don't know your real address and you haven't provided it, you just look like another fraudster. Many times, if you don't put your real address on the DS-160, they will reject you without even asking you one question. You'll go up to the window and they'll say, you're not a bona fide student. They'll hand you the form back and you'll wonder, how can that person know anything about me? They didn't even ask me a question, but they think I'm fraudulent. Well, they, they think you're fraudulent because you didn't give them the correct home address and phone number. So make sure you do that. Um, secondly, if you have parents or siblings in the United States, you're asked to declare that on your DS-160. Many times, the embassy is already aware of the connection between you and that family member. Remember, they applied for a visa before you, and so the embassy already knows that your parent or siblings have a visa. And so if you do not answer that question honestly, they're going to refuse you. But if you do answer it honestly, it does make it harder to overcome the presumption of immigrant status because you do have immediate relatives living in the United States. But it's better to have a chance to get a visa than no chance at all. So please, make sure you answer this honestly. Um, the question that you're going to be asked more than anything else when you go in is the second question, why are you going to this school? And so they'll ask you sometimes, what is your purpose of study in the United States? Or why are you going to the University of California to study economics? It's usually some variation of the same question, but the consular officer wants to know your story. What that means is, you know, why are you going? You need to really prepare how you think about this in advance. You need to kind of understand, in fact, you do need to understand, and you need to be able to explain very quickly how that choice to go to that school to study that program of study is important for your life. And be confident. A good example would be if someone asks you, okay, why are you going to go study at United States University in San Diego? A good answer would be to explain to them, and let's say that you're, you're going to go to do it, your MBA. So if you're going to USU in San Diego to do an MBA, you could tell the consular officer your story. And let's say your story is that you, know, you want to go get a better job and having a foreign credential in your hometown leads to better employment, that your parents, people that you know, they can help connect you with a job, but these jobs require a foreign degree. 
you want to go earn that degree, you want to do that degree in business with an MBA, because you can come back in a supervisory role. That'll enable you to earn more money and provide a better living for your family. And the way you answer that question is really important. It's important that you understand and can communicate why that school, as opposed to one of the 2,000 other U.S. universities, is the one you want to go to. You need to be able to explain why that degree program will help you to return to your home country and how it will help you so that you can get a job. You know, sometimes people have some pretty messed up answers. Uh, you'll ask people, why are you going to that school? And they'll say, because I want to make a lot of money. Or sometimes they'll just say, yeah, I want to go to that school and study so that I can work in the United States someday. Well, if you say that, you're pretty much guaranteeing that you're going to get rejected. Because remember, this is a non-immigrant visa. If you, if you know nothing about the school that you're going to, if you don't know anything about why you want to study that or why that will help you to return to your home country to get a better job, then you really will not be able to demonstrate to the consular officer that you overcome the presumption of immigrant status. You know, try to go work in the United States or illegally immigrate. Because think about it this way. When you go to college in the United States, you have a lot of money invested in that. You're usually, for a master's degree, at a minimum, you will take two years away from whatever job you have. You will spend somewhere between twenty-five dollars to $100,000 for your MBA. And you really can't explain to the consular officer why you're doing it. That just doesn't make sense. A bona fide student that's going to spend $100,000 on an MBA, they can confidently tell you how that investment is important for their future. That's what's really important that you do. Being able to explain why that school is the best for you, maybe it was the most affordable school. It could also be that that school was the only school that you got accepted at. You applied to several schools, but that one was the one that accepted you. Uh, it could be that that school gave you a scholarship. Uh, the program of study and the location that the school is in could be desirable to you. But you need to be able to explain why you want to go to that school and why that program is important for your life in your home. If you can confidently explain why you're going to college in the United States or to a university, if you can explain how that is related to your life, it gives you such an advantage. The last thing here that's really important is I, is I always tell people, apply for your visa early and only to your first choice school. Uh, there's a rumor. Uh, I know that this rumor is very uh, common in India and South Asia. I've also heard this rumor from parts of the Middle East and Africa at different times. And it's the belief that if you collect many I-20s from many different schools, then you have a better chance of getting your visa. That's not true. In fact, the opposite is true. The more I-20s you collect from more schools, the more that the consul officer believes that you are not a serious student. A serious student thinks carefully about which school they want to attend. They get an I-20 from that school because it's where they want to go, and they apply for a visa to attend that school. If you come up to a consular officer and you have 20 I-20s, well, they're not sure which school you really want to go to. You're saying that you want to go to you know, the one that you're handing them, but because you have so many others, it, they don't know. It may look like you're just trying to play the visa lottery. Because a bona fide student would only request I-20 from the school that they really wanted to go to. So please don't collect I-20s from a lot of schools. Just get an I-20 from the school that you want to go to. Um, also, make sure you apply early. Um, don't, don't wait until the last minute to go to the embassy. Uh, that's really... It's so hard. In August and September, the embassy is so busy trying to accommodate so many students 
that if you go in and you say, look, school starts on Monday and it's Friday and you need a visa interview, they may not be able to help you because other people planned in advance. Often during those times of year when the embassy is really busy, consular officers will work extra hours. Now, in the United States, you know, you don't get paid overtime sometimes. So these people, they're there working late at the embassy to help you, not because they're getting paid anymore, but because they want to help you. And they're trying to help these foreign students so that they can get their visa. Don't be someone who makes that problem worse. Please make sure you apply as far in advance as you can. The last piece of advice here at the bottom, you'll see a little heart. Uh, that heart is a really a little American heart. Uh, that's a very, very important point. Uh, when you're at the window and you're doing your interview, you can sometimes be refused, okay? Um, if, if the visa officer refuses you, the, what you need to do and what you need to remember is to ask the visa officer for a supervisory review. So, they refuse you, they give you a letter of explanation saying why you were refused. Go and say, thank you, thank you, but I would like to have your supervisor uh, give my case a review. If you request a supervisor review your case, the consular officer must go and get their supervisor. The supervisor will come back and they will conduct another interview. Sometimes in that second interview, you will get your visa. Supervisory reviews are really helpful, especially when the person interviewing you is a new consular officer. New consular officers are not familiar with local culture and customs. They're most likely to make mistakes. And so when the supervisor comes and you request a supervisory review, they will conduct another interview and you have another chance to make your case. Now, I've heard of at least one person who requested a supervisory review and the person at the window who did their interview was the supervisor. So that's a rare uh, problem, but it can happen. So don't be discouraged. Ask for your supervisory review. Hopefully that will give you a second chance to make your case. And someone who will listen to your case unbiased and give you, you know, another chance. So those are kind of my three tips for your visa interview. Make sure that you apply early, that you have plenty of time uh, to apply for your visa, that you are prepared to answer that school, and that you're really honest, and that you fill out the form completely. And last but not least, make sure you smile and make eye contact in the interview. Um, just, you know, that being confident, it just, it, it carries so much weight. All right, so I've talked quite a bit. Uh, if anyone has a question, I'm going to go into the chat section right now, and I'm going to type a quick line. Does anyone have a question? If you have a question, you can add your question right in here, and we'll answer them. <coughs> Excuse me. Give everyone a second to ask any questions they have. No questions about the visa interview? Hi, Vinci, how are you? Are you a student preparing for your visa? Oh, fantastic. Are you nervous? Oh, fantastic. I love it when students are not nervous because you shouldn't. And see, let me tell you, um, somewhere around 75% of all student visas are issued. So the vast majority of people who apply for a visa get a visa. There's all these rumors that everybody gets refused, and the reality is most people get their visas. So, Vincy, are you, do you feel prepared for your interview? Are you ready to go?
I don't know if we lost Vinci or not. Well, I, I don't think we have any other questions from anybody, so we'll finish the webinar. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for coming, and uh, hopefully you'll have good success with your interviews. Uh, I wish you the best in your studies in the United States, and I hope that everyone is going to be really uh, successful. Ah, Vinci, I can I can see your answer. Oh, you're in Chennai. I have a really good friend. Uh, he used to run the uh, visa section in Chennai. Uh, he, he's an outstanding consular officer. Uh, that's a very well-run consulate. Uh, I can't hear you, but I can see you're typing. If you have anything to say, you're going to have to type it in there. Yeah. yeah. OK. Well, with no further questions, we just want to thank everybody for coming this morning. And uh, I hope everyone has a good experience applying for your U.S. visa and a good time studying in the United States. Thanks, everyone, and good luck with your studies.